The majority of you kept saying in the comment section, Simon, just get yourself a Dremel power tool. Well, I've done just that. You know the start of the video where I was talking about me making mistakes and therefore you guys learning from them? Well, we kind of made a few. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you all had a good weekend. We're so close to 40,000 subscribers, which is just crazy. The support you give me on these videos throughout lockdown uh, has just been amazing. So I do really appreciate it. And I'm trying to make as creative and original content as we possibly can. On the weekend, I bought a Dremel power tool, which the majority of you suggested that I get one to make all these golf club refurbishment ideas that we're doing just a lot quicker. And it's about time that I actually went and bought one. So we're gonna unbox that. We're gonna have a good go at trying to buff this up, make it a bit shiny. I'll show you some closer images of this Cleveland Tour Action Wedge. It's actually in really good condition. Um, I bought this off James and Mark, I bought loads of clubs off James and Mark, so um, a massive thank you to them. They basically cleared out, well, everything. There's so many wedges, clubs, you name it. And I thought this would be a good starting point. So we're gonna get it out. I bought some like polishing tools as well, which hopefully fit with the Dremel and just play about with it. This whole idea of the series is that I hopefully I can make as many mistakes as possible so you guys learn from them and don't have to do them. I've got paints turning up this week. Not only have I got like infills for like lettering so we can finish that Scotty Cameron finally, as well as a Alan who watches the channel got in touch and showed me this tailor made M1, M2 satin white touch up paint, which is very exciting. I'm very looking forward to getting that um, arriving so we can have a look how good it is clearing up the top of those drivers, hybrids, woods, you name it, because they're so easily scratched, dented, and they're just a massive eyesore. And this paint supposedly is gonna to touch all of that up, which is amazing. And I'd love to have a catalog of different paints from different places and sources so that if you've got a Maverick or you've got a Rogue, I don't know why I keep naming Callaway drivers, Mizuno ST190, Nike, VR, whatever it is, it'd be amazing to have a collection of just touch up paints that with doing that, buffing it up, Polishing it, we're back to new. Not only that, you could definitely sell your clubs for a lot more after you use them if they look like, well, they're hardly been hit. So that's quite cool. Let's get in to the main reason of this video. Okay, slightly comical, seeing as I can't find the extension lead and this is as far out of the house. <laughs> I've got the cord going. Obviously, you don't want to do it inside the house for obvious reasons. We will get an extension lead. This will look a bit more of a professional outfit going forward. Anyway, here goes nothing. Okay guys, here we are at the moment. Five minutes in, so much easier. It's unbelievable. Obviously I still need to play about with the different tools and different equipment. Just taking obviously the bit of rust that obviously you saw on the back of the way. So we're not finished, we're gonna definitely keep going. There's um, uh, so many different tools, elements that obviously we can do with this going forward and it's an absolute massive time saver. You can see the bits that I've missed. Again, technique, trial and error better we get and the more experience we get going forward will make a huge difference but not too bad I mean just for five minutes worth of work it's starting to definitely look a lot more clean newer imagine obviously filling all the paintwork in as well this thing would look pretty class because the wedges the grooves themselves are actually in really good condition I definitely want to start having a look at Again, like the little nicks at the bottom here, as you can see down there, like how can we get rid of those? And again, uh, just the bits that are a bit of an eyesore. Right, a bit more work. I'll let you know, I'll get on. You know the start of the video where I was talking about me making mistakes and therefore you guys learning from them? Well, we kind of made a few. We got impatient, sandpaper went straight. I'll show you all the clips for the rest of it. I came inside because it was getting too dark. I put a towel down. I got impatient, sandpaper. I wanted to see if I could basically grind out all the imperfections. You'll see some of the big scrapes or nicks out of the wedge, which we definitely got rid of. However, we then had to buff those out and then different gradients of sandpaper. There's learning, learning? There's learning to be had here. That being said, 
I'm quite excited with the overall finish. It's definitely nowhere near perfect. And to be honest, I probably took away some of the grooves just by sanding it down. So that's something we definitely, we can't negate performance purely for aesthetics. It might look like the best wedge in the world, but if it's got no grooves, then it's kind of pointless. As I said, first time I've ever used a Dremel tool ever. Therefore, we can definitely get better. But there's signs of improvement to be had. And the more I get this process down and I understand exactly how to get rid of the, like, the imperfections without messing with the bounce, leading edge, as well as polishing it up so it looks good, different coatings, different paints, rusting, oil can, you name it. I think it's, it's got scope, especially the lettering at the back here. It looks nowhere near as the same as it did half an hour to an hour ago. And the more we can get into making affordable wedges look class, you spend £10, two hours worth of work, your wedge looks the nuts, that's what I'm all about. And we're definitely there. Don't slaughter me too much in the comment section. I know a lot of you will probably be face palming going, what is he doing? As I said, we use an old wedge. Thank you, James and Mark, for obviously giving me your wedge collection. I thought the Cleveland was the best scope for it. The other thing about wedges as well is that if it does get rusty and you take all the coating off, it's not necessarily the worst case scenario because if anything, it's going to help with grip and friction. Guys, leave me your comments down below. Leave this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you are new. I say close to 40k now, which is epic. And I'll see you guys later.